With a shocking return to pro wrestling and Braun Strowman trying to get his WWE job back, this is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for October 7th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Following his WWE debut in 06, CM Punk would be on Survivor Series later that year with Team DX against Team Rated RKO. Speaking to the Philadelphia Inquirer, Punk talked about having a ton of fan support at that show, saying he was more over than DX, which caused problems backstage. That kind of backfired on me at that point in Philly, because that wasn't the case. That's not what happened. People were mad because we don't understand why this kid's over. Then they'll use the crutch of, oh, it's just internet fans. Yeah, okay, 18,000 people packed the place, and they're all all just internet fans but whatever it means something to me now because it was validation like yeah my hard work is paying off yeah people are seeing me and the things that i'm doing and people like me let's go now i'm in a spot where if that happens it's embraced it's not picked apart and told why 18,000 screaming people are wrong not only did it mean something to me then it means something to me now that's just validation that you're good at what you do a lot of times in this business it won't make sense to the people in charge what catches fire but if the people in charge are smart and have a brain in their head they'll recognize and just go, all right, this is what the fans want, we're just going to give it to them. The reality show rose to the top has brought to light some real issues between Brandy Rhodes and Cody's sister Teal. On Busted Open Radio, Brandy touched on this tension, saying this has been an issue since the beginning. I kind of don't really feel like she said anything. I feel like she danced around it, which is okay. That's actually a pro move. I dance around a lot of stuff because if you take a definite stance and say something, then you have to stand by it. So I think she actually made a smart move there and danced around whatever was asked. But yet, Teal is not lying. We've had a very strained relationship since day one. I think I told the story, or if I haven't told it yet, I think I tell it in an upcoming episode of Roads to the Top, and I'll go ahead and tell it now. So day one, Cody and I have started dating, and it was around the holidays. So it was very quick that we were getting to get introduced to each other's families. I'm in Atlanta, we're getting ready to go meet his sister, who has two little kids at the time and her husband. I said, tell me about your sister because I don't know anything about her. So he launches into this diatribe on this car ride and he starts burying his sister to me. I mean, just going for it. And in good fun, let me say. He does love his sister and they're good friends, but he just starts saying silly stuff. You know how Cody is. He makes stuff up just to pop me, but I don't know her. So we get there, we pull into the driveway. He looks at his phone again and goes, oh crap. I say, what's wrong? He said, I called my sister and I've been recording this entire time. I've got to get her to delete this. I said, well, it was just joking. I'm sure she'll understand. He says, no, you don't know my sister. If she sees this message, she will hate you forever. Me, who didn't say anything? I just sat there in the car listening, and then the door opens and she's standing there looking like a Stepford wife, and I'm just like, I'm screwed. This is not going to go well. And it never went well from that day. I don't know if Teal ever heard that voicemail or not. I'm assuming she did, but I feel like the voicemail was the curse of the beginning of our relationship. Talking with Control Your Narrative, former WWE star Braun Strowman spoke about the next step in his pro wrestling career, mentioning that he has turned down a ton of money from various companies. Everything happens for a reason. One door closes and it's unbelievable how many other doors have opened. So many different opportunities. I turned down a lot of money, like an astronomical amount of money to do this. There's days where I think about it and I'm like, holy sh**. Every three-letter word corporation out there has made me an offer. Talk to me about what I want to do moving forward. And I said, first and foremost, I have something that I want to do. One was this. Two was just having a chance to breathe and live. Like I said, I was unbelievably blessed for my time with WWE, but it was very time-consuming. I went in five years. I saw my parents eight times. I missed people's funerals. I missed weddings. I missed births. I missed Christmas. I missed Thanksgivings. The time was amazing, don't get me wrong, but I'm still a human being, and I have needs when it comes to comfort. I'm very close with my parents, I'm very close with my family and my friends. So it's not only being able to work with my friends on a project, being able to work on an app, being able to do all the other stuff that I have coming out very soon that I'll be able to talk about more, but just being able to live and going back to my grassroots. And this was one of the biggest things to come out of the narrative, was remembering who I was. Strowman is said to make an announcement regarding his future soon, so we'll see if reports are correct about him ending up in Impact.
speaking of Stroman turning down companies, MLW owner Corp Bauer confirmed on a media call that they spoke to Braun and were unable to agree on a deal. We did talk to Braun Strowman for a little bit and didn't come to terms with him on a deal. I can't say whether they're going to be headed or not, I don't know, but we're looking and evaluating talent all the time and see if it's a good fit from a product's point of view with our fans. Well, it mesh and from what notice is that there are some names that are big stars, high profile guys that come in and they're embraced by our fans and there are others that are like, yeah, we know they're busy. They're coming to form a big company, but this isn't their jam, so it's a really delicate thing. You're a chef, certain ingredients will work and certain ones don't. Every scenario is different. Given his love for wrestling and desire to compete in Japan at some point, Brian Danielson chose to leave WWE and sign with AEW where he's already had an incredible match against the world champion Kenny Omega. Speaking to 6ABC, he touched on the major difference between WWE and AEW, saying this is one of the things that drew me to AEW and why I kind of wanted to come to AEW is that AEW is like a wrestling first company. It's a wrestling company for wrestling fans. If you're a wrestling fan, and sometimes WWE is more just based on general excitement, they want to reach as many casual viewers as possible, where I think AEW is like, hey, if you love wrestling, here's this. But also, even if you're not a wrestling fan, we're putting on wrestling and the wrestling itself is going to bring you in. I think that's one of the really unique things about AEW. If you were to do a comparison of the two, like just watching the shows, you'll see that there's a lot more wrestling in the two hours of Dynamite than there is even in a three hour Raw. And sometimes there's more wrestling on an AEW Dynamite show than there is on Raw and SmackDown combined. Continuing with Danielson, he told Fight on Focus that he wants to face MJF as well as take part in New Japan's G1 Climax Tournament. As far as goals like I want to do this, I want to do that, I don't have a lot of that. I would like to do, there are some people I would like to wrestle on AEW and obviously you want them to be incredible matches. I'd love to be able to go to New Japan and do the G1, but that's COVID dependent. I don't hang anything on that. I would love to do something with MJF and AEW. If that doesn't materialize and it never happens, it doesn't matter as long as I enjoy the rest of the things. A feud between Danielson and MJF sounds incredible as we hope that can happen soon. With AEW Dynamite now having a higher rating than Monday Night Raw in the 18 to 49 demographic, Dave Meltzer discussed this further on Wrestling Observer Radio. Dynamite is ahead of Raw with men, and you know, it's not for a week, it's for the month. AEW Live attendance is way above WWE, even if you throw out the Arthur Ashe Stadium, they're well ahead. I did throw out SummerSlam for WWE because I want to know how they're actually doing and not use a number that's an aberration that skews the numbers. Of course, Raw is having to compete with Monday Night Football, whereas Dynamite has no real competition on Wednesday. Still it's a huge feat for the upstart promotion and a possible sign of things to come. Talking with Control Your Narrative, Stroman was asked about his next opponent as he would then send a message to his former stablemate Bray Wyatt. I don't know if it's really one person. I think it's anyone. Anyone that has something inside them that they need to get out. Anybody that needs to be set free. These things have always been good at setting things free. There's only one man on this earth that I want to see knocking that door. He's family. He showed me things in life that I never could have imagined seeing. He bestowed me the gift upon me of being the godfather to his son. Wyndham, I'm waiting for you, brother. Following a shocking release from WWE, Wyatt is expected to have his non-compete clause expire on the 29th, so a match against Strowman could very well be in his future. Despite interest from Impact Wrestling, it seems Braun Strowman wants to return to WWE as Ringside News reported WWE is not interested in Braun Strowman. Both writing teams were asked about interest in Strowman before the 2021 draft, and both said no interest directly to Vince, Bruce, and Johnny Ace. We were told he's approaching WWE and not the other way around at all. Ringside News was additionally told that WWE is not approaching Braun. Braun keeps trying to get his job back. AEW has also reportedly spoken with Braun, but there's no word on how far those discussions went.
In a shocking bit of news, Women of Wrestling have announced that AJ Lee will be a part of the promotion. While the show was removed from Access TV, they are talking to Viacom about a reboot for next year. Now, PW Insider has revealed details about the partnership between WoW and Lee as they noted. WoW approached her and made her an offer to work as an executive on the series. She has not shown any interest in wrestling and has a lot of projects in Hollywood she's working on. Going to WWE or AEW would surely take up a massive amount of her time. WoW won't be as busy. She'll get an executive credit and she can be free to get her other film and writing projects going. In her eyes, isn't an option for her due to health reasons. AJ would add on Twitter, kept you waiting, huh? So proud to join the Viacom CBS and WoW superheroes family as an executive producer alongside the great Genie Bus. You'll see me on camera too as a color commentator. Leo Rush has announced his retirement from pro wrestling a couple times with him recently returning to competition in AEW. Speaking to Vicky Guerrero on her Excuse Me podcast, he explained why he cut his retirement short once again. During the time of me debuting in AEW, my wrestling career viewed by the casual fan, it was on the up. I was going all over the country with independent promotions, New Japan, MLW, and AAA. It was a lot. I was going through a lot of personal things during that time too, and a big part of that was me. Part of it was financial because of the huge hit that me and my family took with being released from WWE and trying to find consistent work without being under contract. There was a lot of things going through my mind. I was also doing music and me taking back and moving in a direction I thought I was capable of moving in the music industry and letting that be a source of income while also allowing me the time to be with my family and wife. I never really got that opportunity to be the dad I wanted to be because I got pushed in the wrestling world pretty quickly and that was when I had my first son. Then my second son I was with WWE so I definitely wasn't at home as I wanted to be. Then with being released and having to work during the pandemic, I had to work twice as hard and twice as much to make up the money and I definitely wasn't home. wrestling star Wildcat Chris Harris, known for his TNA Tag Team America's Most Wanted, was arrested on October 5th in Kenton County, Kentucky for operating a vehicle while under the influence of alcohol with him failing to produce an insurance card and being booked in jail at 10.05 p.m. according to PW Insider. He was released the following morning with his court date set for November 2nd at 9 a.m. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.